Mr. Kailash Sadjarti, welcome to the Capacity for Deb platform, a Nobel Prize in 2014 for his long life career dedicated to end children labor globally. Thank you. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. You received the Nobel Prize five years ago. What has changed in the in the last years? In the last five years, we heard that the number of children working in sectors like the agricultural sector is even increasing. Uh, what is the global framework at this uh, point? Well, the most important thing happened after my Nobel Prize was that it was the first time in the history of Nobel Peace Prizes that they have acknowledged this issue and then considered for the Nobel Prize through me, but the issue was considered. Secondly, uh, when this prize was announced, the issue of child labor came on the limelight at a higher level. It got more attention and more concern, not only in India, but globally. Then I used that opportunity to demand the international community, the world leaders, to incorporate this issue in the Sustainable Development Goals. In the Millennium Development Goals, there was no mention of child labor, slavery, trafficking, things like that. But now, it was possible. I did not miss that opportunity and I met many presidents, President Obama, the president of uh, uh, many countries, and so on. And that was helpful, they supported the idea, which was not possible before the Nobel Prize. And since it has been incorporated now in the Sustainable Development Goal, in Goal 8.7, it is a collective responsibility of the world to ensure that child labor is eradicated. We have seen the growth of child labor and child slavery, child marriages, child trafficking in a particular segment and that is the children on move. 50 million children in the world are looking for a safe place tonight. They are not responsible for this, but they are uh, moving as refugees. I, I, I hate to use that word refugee. The, chil the earth belongs to children, but they are considered refugee in another country because of the political and diplomatic reasons. And many of them are displaced due to global warming. So the victims and sufferers of conflicts and wars and uh, then the global warming are children. And number of them are easily susceptible for child labor or child marriages. So that is a serious, serious challenge. However, in other um, sectors, we have seen the decrease of child labor because of corporations are getting more involved because of education. Ordinary people started understanding the value of education for their empowerment and equality, justice. Um, so the priority in many countries is given in education. International community is also doing wonderful work. Uh, European Commission is among the biggest uh, funders in the ODA funding for uh, education uh, with more than 430 uh, million dollars last year they promised so the things are moving that is helping uh, change that situation but as I said that there are certain sections which are vulnerable for child labor mm -hmm. as you are saying more than 150 million children are today working um, although we have settled 2025 to eliminate this global concern do you see that this is realistic actually when this goal was set it was realistic. It is still realistic. But the serious problem is that eradication of child labor is not still the political priority. It requires only $22 billion additional money annually. And these $22 billion are just four and a half days of global military expenditure. These are equivalent to what Europeans spend one-fifth of what Europeans spend in, uh, in mineral water or in cosmetics or the Americans spend one-sixth of what American one-fifth or one-sixth of Americans spend in, uh, in tobacco. If you don't eradicate child labor, you cannot eradicate poverty and illiteracy. If 152 million children are working today in full-time jobs, it means they are not in schools in primary or secondary. It means they are occupying the jobs of adult people 
and these adults could be their very parents or family members, adult family members. So each child is killing the job of her own father or mother. That is unacceptable. So it has a strong economic imperative and that has to be uh, solved. You just mentioned, uh, Mr. Satyarthi, the willingness of the international community, there's so many efforts conducted. The European Union is actually one of the conglomerates uh, more committed to this cause. What would be your recommendation, the specific measures that the European Union can uh, develop to enhance its impact with regard to this global concern? Well, they can do in many ways. They can do hand-holding of developing countries. There are so many developing countries which are genuinely committed for education of children. That means, on the other hand, eradication of child labor. They have even increased their budget to 20% and 25%. So more than 20% uh, budget is being spent on education, invested on education for children. But their economies are so small that even they, if they spend 100%, that is not going to solve the problem. So, the, the donor governments or the partner governments have to ensure that this should, this should be prioritized. Secondly, I strongly demand is a law. A, a legislative framework that ensures as a legal binding uh, provision that no child labor is employ, employed in the supply chain of European companies. If they are operating in any other part of the world, they have to do due diligence. So the due diligence should be a legal binding uh, to ensure that child labor is not involved. So that law has already been passed in Netherlands uh, just a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago only. And this is also in pipeline in, in Germany. So several governments are, uh, are, are supporting this idea. So I hope and I urge that the European Union as whole should have such a law uh, apart from investing more money for the cause of children, for the protection, safety, freedom and education of children. 80% of the stakeholders attending the European Development Days are coming from the stakeholders. So private sector, international organizations, civil society entities. What could be your message? to the so many stakeholders convening in this intense week in Brussels. It's uh, really ironical that in such gatherings people come and they go back. They make networking, the socialization and so on and so forth. But we need to build strong partnerships, strong trust and through that strong actions which is collaborative. So I I have been trying my best globally that the three major stakeholders, three major sectors should come closer, they should build mutual trust and respect and collective actions. One is the state. A state should be open for civil society. Civil society should also be constructive partner with the governments, with the state. And the third thing is the corporations. So the corporate sector is not simply the money-making machines. The corporate sector is also change makers. So they have to uh, rise above the charity and philanthropy. They have to be more, you know, uh, committed to ensure the corporate social responsibility and corporate social accountability, but in partnership with the government and the civil society. So state, civil society, and corporate have to learn to work hand in hand. And this is a melting point. If you invest one dollar on eradication of child labor, there is a study of World Bank and ILO, the return would be seven times in the next 20 years. If you invest one dollar in education today, the return would be 15 dollars over the next 20 years. There is one strongest possible way to globalize compassion. Let us globalize compassion by prioritizing protecting, investing in children. This way we can globalize compassion for children and compassion for the world. 
Mr. Kailash Sadjarti, thank you so much for being with us at the Capacity for the De De uh, platform. Thank you so much for being with us at the European Development Days, for your work, your commitment, and for inspiring us all. Thanks a lot, sir. My, my pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you.